Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk a little bit about failure. Specifically, you know, when it's time to throw in the towel when you're working on something programming related and just maybe figure out some type of compromise and move on with life. So one of my best slash worst characteristics is I'm pretty, pretty damn determined. So when it comes to most programming tasks, if I try to do something and it's just not working out correctly, uh, I'll just keep slamming my head against the wall endlessly until I get it to work. Uh, but that's also maybe not the best use of my time, right? It's like, you know, if I think that a script may take me, I don't know, like two hours to create or something like that, and I just find out that uh, while I'm going through some edge cases and other things like that, you know, I'm just opening up like cans of worms everywhere. And now it's going to be like something that might take like, you know, maybe a full day, maybe even a couple of days to get a solution that might not be flawless, but it may take me from like 90% to like 95%. So that's basically what happened to me uh, this morning. So this morning I was working on writing a get pre-commit hook to prevent myself from committing to do items or fix me items into a get repo. And I got pretty far. I got like a 90% like solution that worked, but the last 10% was like a, a complete showstopper. And I'll go into the details on that in a, in a minute here. But like what we're looking at here is a commit I had to make to my new podcast site called runningandproduction.com, which is going quite well, by the way. So a lot of folks are submitting their interviews and, you know, there's even like five other podcast episodes that I've recorded and I'm just waiting to publish them. But uh, the other day for one of the email text interviews, um, someone submit their interview and after I edit it for like typos and, and grammar mistakes and linking some stuff and things like that, uh, I sent her a follow-up email with like this to-do item in here because the way she wrote the sentence, it was like, you know, we have to swap between them at least once a year for maintenance. So like when I read her interview, you know, that left me with a question like, you know, like what is maintenance? Like, what does that even mean? So I asked her in an email to elaborate on that. And I sent her back her interview with this like to-do item here. And even with a lot of proofreading, which is pretty crazy, this to-do item literally ended up being like commit to version control, pushed to this repo here, and it ended up being live on the site. Now, certain protocols were skipped when it comes to what I would normally do. So, I mean, I don't want to like ramble on too long about this specific use case, but maybe it's kind of important because like edge cases happen in real life. So here's an example of one. So um, her project called Postwoman, uh, it's a free and fast, beautiful alternative to Postman. That's what it is. You can actually read the whole interview here. But anyways, um, this project, Postwoman, a couple of days ago was trending on Hacker News. And it was on like the front page and people were asking like, you know, things about her tech stack and, and other questions about the project. And there was like hundreds of comments. And I kind of figured like, wow, this would be a, a great opportunity to link this interview because this interview literally goes into all those details. Like it was answering so many people's questions that they had in the Hacker News comments. The problem is uh, she, you know, she wasn't in a position to really answer these to-do items like right then and there. So she didn't know that her article was trending on Hacker News, but um, she was like, yeah, I'll be able to answer your to-dos by tomorrow. But, you know, I nudged her, you know, I sent an email and I was just like, hey, you know, hey, Postwoman, your project is trending on Hacker News right now. You know, it would be really cool if we can uh, get this interview up only because like so many people are asking these questions that this interview answers. And, um, you know, she didn't go through and, and actually modify this file directly. She just sent me an email back with answers to my to-do questions. And I kind of just like really quickly threw them in there and then I pushed it up and you know, now it's running in production, right? The site itself. And so that's how like this to-do item ended up like inside of the production site. Not the end of the world, right? It's like a to-do item is not going to kill anyone, but it does make the site look a little bit weird. It's like, you know, you're reading through the article and like there's just like to-do item sitting there. Actually, I, I didn't even find it. So someone who was reading the site emailed me and was like, hey, Nick, you know, I read through this interview and I noticed there's a to-do to item there. You know, that's probably not intended. Just letting you know. So I thanked them for reporting that and then I immediately fixed it. But then I started thinking like, well, you know, how can I prevent this from happening again in the future? Because, you know, it's kind of dumb just to have like these to-do items floating around in there. 
So, you know, the answer to that is to, is to automate the process of um, before you commit your code, you know, check through the code base and, and make sure that there's no to do or fix me items in there. And if there are, then actually block the commit from being commit in the first place. And I don't know if you know that much about how Git hooks work, but there is a Git hook called pre-commit. And what that does is when you try to, you know, stage some files or, you know, chunks of files to be commit and, you know, using like git add, and then you go and commit that, you know, you can have specific code run uh, inside of like a shell script or whatever script that you want inside of that git hook for pre-commit. And you can do whatever you want. So it's like, you know, you can grep those like staged files or uh, chunks or whatever for specific phrases like, you know, capital to do colon or something like that. And then you can just make the script exit. And then, you know, your commit wouldn't happen. It would be blocked automatically. And that would be great. So I knew the workflow in my mind, like what I needed to do. So then, I, I, you know, I just started Googling because, you know, all these programming problems that I have, like most of them are something that other people have solved in the past. So, you know, I just started Googling around the topic of like uh, get pre-commit, like to do block, you know, things like that. And a couple of these tabs that I have open are things that, you know, I, I found uh, throughout the way. So like a couple of gists came up and, you know, like this guy has this here and, you know, this is one way to, to solve that problem using like a Ruby script and, you know, here's another bash script. And, you know, I don't want to like badmouth all of these scripts, but none of them really worked in a way that I would consider to be like robust. There was like a lot of issues where, yeah, things just didn't work in, in ways that um, I thought were good. So, you know, some of them had issues where it's like, well, you know, if you had like five files and only one of those files had a to-do item in it and you tried to commit anything, then it would actually block like all commits, even though that one unstaged to-do item was in there. So like long story short, you know, I really went through and I started Googling all these different things. And um, yeah, I even found like this one this repo here, like git confirm. And this one was pretty close to just actually being a good solution to drop in and use, but it just didn't work out. There were just certain aspects of the script that just didn't work for me when it came to like having to deny or say yes to all these, but you can't skip them. But when you click no, like the thing automatically, uh, you know, it just exit this, exits the script instead of being able to skip them. So yeah, it was just very non-intuitive to, to, to do this. So I ended up writing my own little script and the script wasn't even that long. It just used git grep to kind of just go through, you know, all of the staged files and, you know, check just those staged files for certain terms like to do colon and, or like fix me colon and, and things like that. And it was really not that, not that long. It was like five lines of code. And uh, I would show that to you, but I literally deleted that code already because it didn't work for like, you know, the last 10%. So the last 10% for me was like, well, you know, I often use git add dash P. I don't know if you know what that command does, but it allows you to kind of like step through specific code changes in one file and only commit certain bits and pieces of that file. So it is a very, very, very nice way to kind of crawl through you know, multiple commits across multiple files and just only commit subsections of the file. So you can make these really, really nice git commit messages that line up to, you know, the exact code that was changed, you know, instead of just like adding the whole entire file, which may have like, you know, eight other things in there not related to that commit. And uh, yeah, I just could not get it to work in a way where it's like I can step through that nicely and uh, have these to-do items skipped. And, you know, I went at this for like two and a half hours and you know, I decided to just throw in a towel because like this easily could have turned into something that I would spend probably like the rest of the weekend on because right now it is, you know, 1.55 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. And, you know, I didn't want to blow my whole weekend working on this. Like I have way, way better things to be to be doing on my weekend, right? Like going out, doing some fun stuff, going out to dinner later tonight, like, you know, and then I wanted to edit a video for like tomorrow night, just because we're not a video, a podcast, just because, you know, that's kind of like relaxing to me, editing like a one hour podcast. Like that's what I almost do for fun. <laughs> so, but anyways, like long story short, you know, I went through all of this. I got the script almost working and then I just uh, decided like, you know what, it's not worth automating this. And, uh, you know, there's other ways to solve this. So if you've been following my, my dot files repo, 
I, I do have a vimrc file that has had this function in here since the beginning, so quite a long time. But it's not really something that I've used that frequently. But here, and I'll, and I'll show you exactly how this works, by the way. So, and by the way, this is the, um, the running in production Git repo. If I actually just run to do here, which is a command, it will go through my whole entire code base and it'll look for lines that have like a to do in it. So in this case, I found one of them in one of my style sheets here for uh, Bootstrap. So this is actually code I did not write. This is part of the Bootstrap library. And they just happen to have a to-do here. Like, I guess they're going to remove this in, in version 5 of Bootstrap. But um, yeah. So now, like, instead of trying to automate all of this, I'm just going to run the to-do command before I decide to start committing code. And then just kind of go from there. Plus, like, it's really tricky when it comes to, like, the to-do stuff. Like, the way I had my script set up that was working mostly, um, you know, it would look for to-do with a colon with any number of characters before it, because typically when you're going to add a to-do, right, it's going to be, like, probably um, right after a comment in a code file, but maybe not. And then also, like, you know, anything after the colon would all get included. But, you know, my problem wasn't so much with the pattern. It was just, like staging bits and pieces of a file instead of all of it and being able to like filter and skip through that nicely. But yeah, so now it's like, you know, instead of trying to just automate that, I'm just going to run the to-do commands. Uh, if you're not using Vim, if you're using VS Code, uh, back when I used VS Code, there was a plugin or extension, whatever, that, uh, you know, it showed all of your to-do items in a sidebar. So I guess the lesson here, it's kind of like, you don't always need to automate everything. Uh, in this case, sometimes it's just a little bit easier just to like, do a semi-automated approach where you do need to remember to do one extra thing, but it's not that that frequently that this comes up. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the end result now. So I'm going to go enjoy my weekend. I hope you enjoy your, I hope you enjoy yours too. And uh, you know, if you like these types of videos where I'm kind of not going over coding stuff, but kind of like reflecting on personal experience about, you know, coding related topics, you know, give a thumbs up to the video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this, because, you know, this is something uh, or things that I think about all the time, and I can make like a million videos about this. Uh, so with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.